we could make this go to our <gasps> YouTube. There we are. We're live. I mean, our, live. our YouTube's, yeah, our TikToks. We're live. we're live. Okay. Cheers. Nobody freak out. Nobody freak out. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes. I'm just going to wait like 30 seconds before I decide to start like doing a welcome entry thing. <sighs> because wait, how can you, how can you tell people join? Can you just see on your end? Um, I don't even, honestly, don't ask me because I really suck at this stuff. Um, I think I'm going to go live for a hot second on TikTok and tell people that we're live. Okay. Oh, just yeah. I'll do the same thing. Hi. Okay, Hi. so I I do not not like like oh no. What I am currently live here? on YouTube. If you go over hi. Hi. <laughs> um Come if you go over that. on the side, there's this like private chat and then you have comments and you can see like click on the comment portion and that way you'll be able to see like people who comment actively. I don't oh, see cool. nothing. Hi Alina. Jessica's here. I don't see Jessica. shit. What do you wait? So, onto my Instagram story and there's a swipe up with the YouTube channel that we're on right now. I'm here with Candy yes. and Jewel. Check it out. Hi. <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh my God. Girl, Girl we got this. Let's do it. Let's I never know it. how to do it. Thank you Anything. Guys so much for joining us. Oh my God. Where did Jin go? Where did Jin go? <laughs> I knew something like this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it. Nothing is She'll, She'll be, be back. back for a minute. All right. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this indie author panel. Um, I'm like so excited to have you guys here and like talk to you guys. And I know that uh, this will be a great thing for like new indie authors or like people who are just getting into publishing and stuff like that because you guys are obviously very successful. And I'm excited to pick your guys' brains. So welcome to this live. Thanks for, thank you for having us. Um, thank you. And there she is. Where did she go? I hit like desktop view and the whole thing went away because I wanted to see the comments, but I can't see them. So it's probably because I don't have an iPhone. All Which, right. Uh, I was, I will, one one, we will relay comments to you, Jen. Fuck. Why can't I see anything? <laughs> it's going to be okay. Um, I I'm, can see them. I found them. Nice. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Woo. Okay. Oh so, my God. Obviously, I feel like it's pretty known who each of you are, but I'm going to do a little like introduction thingy. Like, we have Candy Steiner, who is iconically known for a love letter to whiskey, and most recently, a very good, uh, like, 90s throwback say yes no novel that was phenomenal. I love it so much. Um, and then you have Willow Winters, who is the author of just recently 50 books, correct? If I'm yes. not mistaken, yes. yes. If you include my novellas, it's 50. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. 50 books. congratulations! Thank you. Um, like Tell Me to Stay, Tequila Rose, and Cuff Kiss. And uh, mm -hmm. then we also have author Jen Sterling, who is iconically known for the Perfect Game series and other books like 10 Years and Dear Heart. I hate you. Thanks. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I was like, I'm, I was like, That's I'm gonna harder. have to. I try and hype these ladies up and try and keep it short because these women be writing some books. <laughs> <laughs> but, mostly mostly um, Willow. Willow's like, hi, I had 30 releases this year and a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking to Nina. I'm doing four and only four next year. And I just shut down two ideas um, for next year because of that. I'm like, I really got to slow down. Like, oh, I'm tired. I'm yeah. So tired. <laughs> Next year it'll be like four books, and she'll be like, "But I got to squeeze an Avelia in there, so like four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe an anthology. Maybe four like, but uh, but in in between the four books, I'm gonna start like ten new companies. I'm gonna have some yeah. new boxes <laughs> for you guys. I'm gonna build you a house. Throw yeah. another baby. <laughs> yeah. So, Twin. You know, I don't think that we need it because I think that everybody's pretty warmed up to each other. Stevie is going to introduce an icebreaker game for you guys to play so oh that God. nobody's nervous. Okay. I'm not nervous. Who's nervous? But of course you're not, Jen. Of course you're not. <laughs> Sorry. No, none of these women, these ladies are not nervous either. No, man. Yeah. See? I, I kind of love I've this. I Jen's ass in my hands. And also yes. I've done yoga on the beach with Willow. Like we have crossed boundaries. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why am I? Like, I'm so jealous. I'm pissed. <laughs> was that like? Can I like pay extra for that? Like a VIP signing? Like was that an extra uh, ticket? Although, 
I do want it known that Candy was literally just here uh, 20 minutes away from me and didn't visit me. So oh. I'm not bitter about that <laughs> at all. Oh, She's yeah. not holding it against me. But no. It's fine. Oh, no. Okay, 20 so minutes. Wait. Stevie, hit us with your icebreaker before Tim <laughs> okay. tells me. <laughs> That you have, I'm gonna give you a trope. You have to name a book, but you cannot name one of your own. Oh Jesus! You got it. So I'm gonna throw curveballs. You cannot name one of your own. Okay. Enemies to lovers. Um, I'm not doing it. Oh, monster um, in his in, eyes. Work in, work in progress by Stacey Hart. Okay, Jen, go. I I uh, I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so anything by Whitney G. Oh yeah, there you go. Got it, nice. Reasonable Got doubt. It. Reasonable doubt by Whitney G. God, reasonable doubt. Or the one that so takes place in an office where she's got like a super I love her books. They're so fun. Yeah. I All love right. that. Okay. That's so good. Best friend's older brother. Best friend's older brother. I don't I don't know. An Abby Glines book. I'm just gonna name <laughs> authors. I love how you're just yeah. like authors. <laughs> I like iconically authors. I literally don't know. But I feel like Abby has written something like that. I know mine make me hate you, but I don't. I don't think I've read one before. I've I don't think read, I have either. It's always been like brother's best friend. It's yeah. very rarely best friend's brother. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. That's a good point. We need more of those. We need more of those. I like I that. Candy okay. book. That's my. That's <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, this one's gonna be tough for Jen. Sports romance. Oh, the oh I'll just I'll just I'll series. just name Candy Steiner's the wrong game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we literally, me and Stevie literally talked about this. We were like, dude, they're gonna say each other's <laughs> books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I have to say the perfect game just because that was literally one of the first indie romance books I read, and it made me go, oh yeah, I think I found my people. Like this is my <laughs> that's the best feeling in the whole world when you find your people. For real, man. Yeah, I wish I could find mine. Stop it. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> didn't stop. 20 minutes away. No, go on. I love you. Uh, okay, on. clearly. Second chance romance. Ooh. I'm literally, I'm, sta I'm not staring off into space. I'm literally trying to cheat and look at my bookshelf that's over there <laughs> of everyone's books. I'm bringing up my Kindle app. <laughs> Second like, let me Claire. Like, Claire Wait. Contreras Kaleidoscope Hearts. Is that oh god, I love her. Fisher's Light. Ter Terra Civic Fisher's Light. That is one of my favorite books of all time. Nice, nice. So I've I just was... taken over this whole trope, and now um... I win. <laughs> okay. Well, well behind, really... the, behind the bar is Britney C. Cherry. Oh, such a good book. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I like that book. Willow, Willow stop trying Kindle. to not play. I'm, I'm searching. I'm searching on my Kindle right now Kindle. for like, like a really, really good one. Um, you got this. I we see second chance, right? I'm looking at like I'm scrolling back to go to like my favorites ever. I write second chance, but I don't know that I read a lot of anything by Willow Winters. <laughs> <laughs> Any book by Willow. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm going to say. I just want to say they're trying to help us out in the comments if you want to cheat. They are. Okay. <laughs> oh. Reclaim love. There you go. There you go. There you go. They're trying to help. They're trying to help. <laughs> oh, they are a paranormal okay. smut on here. It's not even funny. Jen is oh, watching Jen. 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 Listen, Jen, keep Jen is just going to be like popping in and out. I just know it. It's because she's mad that Candy didn't come see her. It's all my fault, y'all. <laughs> but to be fair, if you know mine and Stacey Hart's relationship, then I can fully blame this on her. She was just not willing to share me with anybody while I was in Colorado, so I blame her. There you go. That's no, it. no excuse. I'm late to this because once again, I closed out of the browser. <laughs> so. I was telling her that it was because you're upset that she didn't come see you. It's all I my mean, fault. Uh, but listen, I've been in Colorado for over a year and I haven't even seen Stacey yet. <laughs> Yeah, that's her again. I and she's 20 minutes problem. away. I haven't seen anyone. I haven't even seen Megan Quinn, and she's freaking five minutes away. Make it happen. Make it happen. I love it. I love it. All right, Stevie, was that your last icebreaker question, or do you have another one? It was. No, that was the last one. Okay. No, no, more, so, no more tropes. No, yeah, <laughs> okay. I don't have any more pressure. Um, 
now that you guys have we have broken the ice and everybody's comfortable around each other um <laughs> we're gonna move into uh questions for you guys about like your author career um and the first one being how long have each of you been publishing and the number of books you've published thus far well you guys already know mine is 50 um and i've been publishing since she was born Oh, and I'm going to just back into my bedroom and I'm going to bribe her with my phone. Here we go, sweetie. Go over there. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. It would be much better if you were drinking. It would be. It would be. Maybe when Sean comes up to steal her, she's literally hiding under the chair so that my husband can't find oh, her. Can't take her away. I love it. Her. Oh, who's next? Candy? Anybody? Um, I've been publishing since 2013, so eight years now. And um, I think if I counted correctly, I'm at 26 right now. Nice. Yay. I've been what publishing about? since 2011. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. People ask me all the time how many books I publish, and I'm just like, I don't know. Look on Amazon. Like, I, I literally just, don't know. I just literally <laughs> counted them for this because I had no idea either. And so yeah, I, I don't care. I was like, oh, I need to, I need to look that up. <laughs> I love how I it's just, to... you guys just be like, no, nah, I'm just, you know, another book is out. Another book is out. I don't even count them anymore. They're just there. <laughs> you know, I, just... I do remember though. I, I, it's still like, I remember the feeling of having like three books out and being like, oh man, I can't imagine having 10 books or whatever. Yes. And then yeah. Yeah. time just like flies by and the next thing you know, you're like, wait. Like I just reread or A like Love Letter to Whiskey for the first time since I did edits on it in 2016. And I was reading it and it felt like it wasn't me who wrote it. <laughs> like I was like reading it like, wow, there's some good shit in here. Like, <laughs> did you cry like you made everybody else cry? Because I will I never forgive you for that book. Ever. Yeah, I Ever. did. I, did. <laughs> I literally was telling somebody the other day that I thought that it was actually, because this was the first book I'd ever read by you. And I thought, I genuinely, I was like, yo, this author is like genuinely writing this letter to this dude. And I was like, oh my God, the story's not over yet. Like, he, we got to go find him. But I was like, oh no, she played me. She played me. <laughs> <laughs> she played me. That was good. <laughs> so, yes. But uh, Stevie, you go ahead and take the next question. Okay, so what made you decide to publish romance? Jen, you got to go first this time. Okay. Um, it, there was no, I mean, that's what I wanted to write. Like, I, there was nothing else really at, at the start that I could even see myself writing. I knew that I wanted to write romance. So that's what I published. And also it was like, at the time of 2011, I was definitely still like querying, trying to be like, oh my God, this book is so great and so clever and everyone's gonna want it. And no one wanted it. Like no, no one wanted the book. And I remember being like, okay, if I get one more rejection, then I guess I'll just self publish and be a fucking failure. Like that's how I felt. <laughs> and then I got, I got that like last rejection in the email and I was like, <clears throat> guess I'm gonna self publish. But it's like, I wanted to put that book out so bad. I didn't care how I did it. And now I laugh because I think like self-publishing is the go, dude. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. The universe was on your side. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I love okay. Can Candy, you go next. So we'll just we'll reverse it. We'll just keep going okay. in like a circle. Okay. okay. It's a circle. Um, yeah. so I I the first like time I started writing was in third grade and I wrote poetry about boys. That was how I got oh, yeah. into writing. I still have some of them. I literally wrote a poem to the tune of Skater Girl by Avril Lavigne. It's literal, <laughs> literal gold. So I will, I'll share that. Is that, that is still funny. alive? Can that I can you read that? Brilliant. It's still alive. It's oh my God, alive. I need it uh, in my life. <laughs> but when I was in college, actually like studying writing and, and going and I, I majored in creative writing and I actually studied nonfiction primarily. I always thought I was going to write like self-help books and like childhood trauma books and like books on like just different things that I had experienced in my life. That was always what I thought I was going to do. It's what all my professors were like, oh yeah, you're the best at this and whatever. And then I graduated, I read 50 shades of gray and then I read the, the perfect game. I read the Keaton Chronicles by Jillian Dodd and a couple others. And I was like, you know what? 
this is my jam. And like, I had an idea for a book. It was like one book. I thought it was just gonna be one. And I did it as a new year's resolution. And then when I published it, it was like, it went from the stripping faucet to like a waterfall that has not stopped since. And so now I just have endless romance book ideas. And so Candy, here, I, live, I live here now. You and I are so similar with like the way that we think about like <laughs> writing and kind of our story. Like, I literally just had one book I wanted to tell and I thought that was it. And I was like, yes. what kind of weirdo just writes one book? And I was like, well, that's all I, that's literally, I'm like, I only just have this one idea. And then like after publishing it, I was like, oh my gosh, wow, I have another idea. Like <laughs> it, it was so, I was so shocked by that. Like I was so shocked. It just wasn't nothing about like writing for me was even remotely planned. Yeah. I love how one of these comments was like, wait, wait, you mean people actually follow through on New Year's revolution? <laughs> oh, I'm definitely that person. I'm so bad. I'm like the annoying friend who goes around the New Year's Eve party like, what are you going to do this year? And everyone's like, shut up, Candy. I'm still drinking. I'm still eating carbs. Get out of my face. <laughs> All right, what about well, you, Willow? Um, I was writing for me. I was hoping to get like $50 so that I have my own money because I was a stay-at-home mom. I didn't think it was going to be anything at all. I had no idea what I was doing. My first cover was horrible. I didn't even know Photoshop. I edited it in preview. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is preview? When you click on the photo and you can crop. <laughs> oh, shit. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrendous. It was horrible. Mine's um, bad too. But other people liked it. And I, then I was like, well, this is a challenge. And I really love a challenge. So, and it was never, there was never an option other than what I wanted to read. And I'm a romance lover. So it was always going to be romance. I might yeah. read a thriller one day. Like get me in the right mood. And it can it can end in a not a happily ever after where she kills him. Like just I'm <laughs> yeah. okay with that. I will read the shit out of that. I'll tell you that right now. Where she kills him. I feel yeah. like that's the only acceptable ending if they're not gonna be together. Exactly. Yes. Like she has to murder him. Yeah. <laughs> Black Widow, yeah. baby. So that should be the title of the book, The Way I Black Killed Him. Baby. And then the whole the whole book, they just know at the end. Yeah, they know but they don't believe him. it because no one thinks it's right. really gonna Right. Yeah, it's like spoiler alert, he dies in the end, she stabs him. And they're like, oh, I'm like, really, like, what's the ending? And I'm like, no, like legitimately, like that's the ending. With the candlestick <laughs> from the library. I love it. Okay, so shifting gears a little bit, what have been some of your toughest moments as authors? Hmm. And we'll start with candy this time and move some other direction. Okay. Um, I mean, I think we've all had our fair share of these and I, you know, I, without talking all night about it, um, I think the biggest one for me was the pressure that came when I first started writing and I was working full time, uh, mm -hmm. it was for me and it was fun. And I did, I just wrote because I love to write. I got excited about it. I would come home every night and like hurriedly make dinner and then like rush to write. And I couldn't wait to sit there and like pour my heart into what I was working on. And it was just for fun. In my mind, no one was ever gonna read it. It didn't matter, whatever. And then when I started making money off my books, it was this it was this double, I don't know, like this catch 22 because I was thrilled. It, here's this dream come true. I can write full time. I can put all my energy into marketing my books and writing my books. And, and this is what I've always wanted to do since I was 10 years old. But then, the other side of it is that suddenly there's this financial pressure on my creativity. And that yeah. was something very, very difficult for me to, to navigate. Um, luckily I had some mentors who sort of helped me through that Stacy Hart being one of them. And, um, I also listened to big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which is a fantastic book. If you haven't read it or listened to it, you totally should. Um, but I now like have, finally come to a place where I I don't ever think about like whether my book's going to make money or list or like do any of that, which was kind of, I was kind of obsessed with it for a while because I had almost been like, it was like Pablo's dog, right? Like you're rewarded for it. Like your yeah. book hits the top 50 and everybody's screaming, oh my God, Candy, you're in the top 50 or whatever. And so then when you release, you're like, fuck, I got to do better than that. I have to somehow, I have to somehow write a book better than a love letter to whiskey. I don't got anything better than that. That was it, you know? And it was yeah. it was really, really tough. But now 
I think after lots of work on that and kind of, um, you know, doing some self-reflection on what, uh, redefining success, it has become fun again. And I'm back to being excited and, and loving every second of writing and yeah. just being stoked about it. And, um, and knowing that whether my books make money or not, I'm never going to stop writing. So if I got to go hustle at Chili's, so be it. But <laughs> I'm still going to be, be a great waitress. Be a great waitress. <laughs> <laughs> you, make the, you make the big tips, baby. Yes. Tips. I mean, yeah. I think that respectively, like I read this um, like quote or whatever. I saw it. it was like a YouTube montage of like motivational speeches. And it was like, I do. I <laughs> I am such this person that like watches them every morning because I feel like it's going to give me some type of like enthusiasm to get through the day without wanting to like, you know, fall off a cliff. But <laughs> I saw this, I saw this guy and he was talking about how when you define su success for yourself, right? Like success for Oprah is probably like making a million dollars a day. Right. But success yeah. for me is like, not being able, like, you know, like not stubbing my toe on the coffee table when I wake up <laughs> at 3 a.m., you know? So, like, in, like, uh, you have to learn that your success is different than other people's success. And defining that for yourself is how you're going to make yourself happy. So, no matter what anybody tells you, as long as that you're happy and what you're doing is, like, fulfilling for you, then who the fuck cares if, you know, you know, someone you money or you're lit or whatever. No, I or what? Part of it might also have to do with that imposter syndrome because yeah. that's my lowest low involves imposter syndrome and i was feeling it when you were when you were talking i was like i i know that feeling i think we all know that feeling yeah um, like when you start to doubt and then the doubt keeps you back and keeps you down and your success in your head was was it a fluke is it never coming back because the low lows in the industry are just as severe as the high highs i think yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, they're lonely. They're like you feel lonely because we're we're you know we're all connected in online, right? And yeah, we're but at book signing, but we're stuff, not. But Right. right. Like the success of your book doesn't affect my life. Right. So it's like yeah. no matter how good of friends we are or how much we love and support each other, our own failures and successes are super lonely. Yeah, yeah. they're personal. <laughs> And it's, your, it's something you created, so it's it's very vulnerable. Um, it's it's not like oh, like I I don't even know what the what the equivalent would be, but like oh, I I served someone at, at Chili's, right? Let's hypothetically, I'm a waitress or whatever, and you didn't like the food. Okay, whatever, I can take the food back and get you a new uh, plate without being personally offended. But yeah. when your book is not received well especially when you think it's going to be like that is that's a hard it's a hard place to hit and then you just kind of have to like go back to that place well i loved this i wrote this because i wanted to read it and that's yeah. what it matters and about. also it could be a million things it could like i mm -hmm. always say it could be the cover because nine out, nine out of ten times when somebody's release doesn't go well i'm like just change the cover change the cover change the cover. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't know willow have you and i had that conversation while i was driving through the mountains getting like cut off on a road <laughs> i might have had that conversation recently <laughs> oh my God. yeah so yeah i will let willow or i guess like jen you can answer this question now or I guess I can repeat it. Or I don't know if you've already answered it. This is my issue. Like, because I feel like we're all going to talk, you know? And I feel like I'm going to be like, okay, now you go. And Jen's like, I already fucking answered. I didn't answer. <laughs> I mean, I didn't answer. I, I totally, it's it's so hard because I absolutely understand what Candy's saying. And I understand what Willow says. Like, we all understand everything. I think the lowest low for me was in the beginning of my writing career when, um, when those bad reviews first came in, right? And people were just like, oh my God, like you write like a 12 year old, you are so stupid. Like this book is a fucking joke, like just mean shit. And I came across a quote that was like, in order to be successful, you must be willing to be uncomfortable. And yeah. I just remember that just struck me like right in the guts. And I was like, oh my God, I need to look at those words every single day. Otherwise I'll never write another book again. I'll never write another word again because I was just so rattled I was just so rattled by the negative reviews. And I think like everything that bothered me in the beginning, like no longer bothers me. And that just comes with time and experience and releasing more books and figuring out what kind of writer that you are 
is like, and we can talk about how much we love each other and how much friends there are in this business, but it's still, it's very hard to not be competitive. It's very hard to not want what other people are having. And so kind of like getting comfortable, with not wanting to follow what someone else is doing. Like, Hey, they're, they're having success because, Oh my God, they're releasing a book every six weeks. If you're that kind of author, like then do it. But if you're not, which I am so very clearly not, that's not something I'm ever going to be. And yeah. it's accepting who you are and then figuring out how to be successful with the kind of author that you are. So yeah. I, I would say like the hardest thing for me was the reviews at the beginning and then Abby Glines trying to sabotage my career at the beginning. Let me be very clear. Abby and I are amazing friends now. She's <laughs> one of my closest friends, one of my best friends. I absolutely freaking love her, but I wanted her dead like eight years ago. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes is comparison is a thief of joy. And I like any time that I ever like find myself with that little, like that, that souring of your gut when you like see something happen for someone. And anytime that it goes from me being like, Oh my God, that's amazing to being like, why is that happening to me? I like immediately shut down yeah. and either go meditate or go yoga or whatever. I'm like, something is happening inside me right now. Like that's making yeah. me feel that way. You know, it's, but it's, you're right. It's impo it is impossible it, you can be supportive and also be like, damn, girl, I want that too. Of course. Of course. Yes. I think that's yes. fucking normal because you. I'm so happy for everyone's success, but it doesn't mean you don't want your own. Yeah. I was like a Netflix show. I love BB. Go BB. Yes. Love yes. your life. Everyone go watch it. Also, hey, Netflix. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, hey. What, what about the rest of us? No, What's of the Patty? Like, let me pull up. <laughs> I got out yes, of here. for real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just want to say hi to everyone in the comments. Thanks for being here. I see JC yes. and Brianna and Alina. Hi. Yeah. Um, so now Willow, your turn. What do you my, think your yeah. lowest point was? I know exactly what my lowest low was. And Candy has seen me in tears. Like I lost my shit. What was it, three years ago now? I yes. first of all, it involves also publishing a book. I'd public I'd went wide. I had burnout after being in KU. K and KU, I published 13 of those 50 in the first year of publishing. Actually, I think it was the first 10 months. It was ridiculous. I had co-written with Lauren Landish. It was, yeah, I was on, 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 like just constantly going and I had burnout and I went wide. We bought a house. My husband quit his job. That stress of money like it was no longer monopoly money. Hey, Jen. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep things interesting here. It's whenever I try and read the chat discussion and then I try and leave the chat discussion and it leaves everything. <laughs> so sorry, no more, no more chatting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my husband had quit his job. We had a new house. I went wide. I published Forget Me Not, which did wonderfully. It was my first USA Today bestseller that wasn't an anthology. <laughs> Um, yeah, I yeah, loved it. Um, still one of my favorite books ever, which was also denied by my my agent sent it out and it was denied. And then they wanted a meeting after R Random House wanted to have a meeting in New York after it hit USA Today, even though mm -hmm. I asked them to publish it and they said no. Um, but so then I published Damaged and a lot of myself and my husband is in that book because he quit his job to help me. And that transition was incredibly difficult for us. Not only because I don't think he quite understood the amount of work that goes into being a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. And now he was staying at home with me and I needed help with publishing and he didn't understand nor wanted to understand a lot of things. And I didn't understand how he didn't want to understand. And our communication was like this. <laughs> yeah. And there are scenes in that book from our marriage and that book flopped hard, hard. So I'm sitting here with house, with debt, with a husband who I loved and I was afraid of divorce and I was having panic attacks. It was the worst lowest low of this career by far. Yeah. And I had to write book two. <laughs> and I was, just, I was just like, I don't know how I'm gonna survive this. Luckily, we did survive it and he is my partner in every way and just transitions and growth sometimes can be difficult. And um, Anthony said once, like when 
you feel that panic when you know that things have to change, it often happens before you level up. Yeah. And I definitely, oh. I leveled up fast and it was the cover and it was the title. I literally wrote like poetry for this book and it was very emotional and the reviews were all emotional. And the cover was like a naked guy holding his junk with tattoos. <laughs> it did not Standard. matter. The, these two things were not the same. Um, so I just <laughs> released that last year actually um, as uh, you know, I love you. And it was, um, I should not have read that and rewritten it while I was pregnant. I was like, that was a choice Were right there. Yeah, because I was so Aww. emotional. I was like, I we came. <laughs> <laughs> but it did wonderfully and now all is well. But that was definitely um, like one of my lowest lows of my life, probably, not just of the, the career. Yeah. Yeah. Shoo. Well, that just like, you know, like hurt my heart. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to cry on this. Wow, I'm just trying, Jesus. Okay. So, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you guys were able to like come out of that and like congratulations to you on like all Thank the success you. and stuff like that. I think that honestly, you guys being open and honest about like lows in the point of this career, I think help people realize that like human beings are like behind like writing books, you know, like it's not just like a robotically, you know, created thing. And I think it makes like, I think it makes books and words feel so much more real when you, like, you know, know, like, a quirk about somebody or you listen to them talk about, like, I, hey, I, I was going. I just, Go I'm sorry, let me just interrupt you. <laughs> I, I think, I no, I just, I think that this particular discussion is so important because it's not something that we, that anyone ever talks about. Yeah. Um, unless we're, like, together in a group. But I just feel like it's the type of stuff that like people in our industry like just don't admit or say out loud. And so yeah. it, it helps us to feel um, very alone. Even if we've been extremely successful, like I haven't seen anywhere near the success that I've seen since the perfect game. And mm -hmm. I've definitely struggled, but I don't think people realize that. And I don't think people think that of me, yeah. but if you would talk to me, I would tell you, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, I don't, I don't lie. I don't, Candy doesn't lie. Willow doesn't lie. Like n nobody in this group, like puts up a false front of like, everything is super easy and every single book i release is making me a million dollars like yeah. no i mean I how nice for you but that's yeah. not like i don't appreciate that people don't talk about the truth i don't appreciate that people yeah. enjoy being misleading i don't like that that's why i love TikTok so much i have found so much more yeah. honesty so true and openness and people needing that help and other people reaching like i this is one of the reasons why i love tiktok it's so much more genuine and you get to I see love the person tiktok because candy is very creative and then i just copy yeah. what she does Stop. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh my god candy just did this Literally, Candy, you started, you literally started the trend of the visuals talking over the visuals. Uh -huh. You started that. Game. I remember that one. You started like, that, oh. and I was like, that is the most brilliant thing I've ever seen, and now it's all I do. Oh, thank <laughs> and you. I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this until it works, but, but those videos that I do are successful for me, but you like did that. And I was like, oh my God, I hope Candy doesn't care, but I'm 100% copying her on this. No, but that's <laughs> what TikTok is. Like, that's what also what I love about TikTok is you see a good idea and you're like, I'm gonna do it. And that starts a trend. So it's yeah. like, it's not offensive. Like, please do what I'm doing. So then everybody yeah. starts doing it. And now it's a trend. there's plenty and of success to be had. There is yeah, so I think TikTok has had. really showed other authors in the community yes. like look at how much like look at how much everybody can share like look yeah. at how yeah. successful multiple people can be at one time without you needing to fucking kill somebody well okay. look at like 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 jennifer milliken who yes. who has this amazing success from a TikTok, and it's not like it wasn't a flop they love her books and they're reading everything that she writes now yeah. that is incredible Same and with, up, um chris up, granada chris yeah. granada I has love, I mean, she cool. just had another one take off every time she has one i copy it and i'm like look she has another one <laughs> yeah <laughs> You just like scroll through and you like see somebody's face that you know, and you're like, oh yeah, you've got a shit ton of exactly. likes. Like, go you. I'm yeah. so proud. But yeah, I think that TikTok has shown people like the vast like majority of everybody that like 
you know, this one person blew up with like a million likes and you have God knows how many people bought that book. But then you have like two, two videos down. There's another one with the exact same amount of likes. Like people can spend money on multiple books and multiple yeah, offers right. and invest their time in that. And TikTok I, is one of the only platforms that I think that anybody has been able to see that A, has gotten like the views that it has and B, it's free. It, that's free advertisement. And their ads yes. suck. Their ads are really bad. So oh, yeah. No, their ads, ads are super bad. bad. They were all 13-year-old yeah. boys putting what? What? Yeah. I, was, I picked women. But, I picked the over but, 30. What are you? <laughs> what did these women come from? But in Not general on phone. TikTok, <laughs> what? TikTok. What TikTok has also shown to me is that it's not just Amazon buyers, right? So like yeah. these these TikToks Last take time. off and you're selling on every platform if your books are everywhere. And that My paperback sales have gone that, up. Yes. I mean, and yeah. audio. Yes. The people on TikTok, on Book Talk, that appreciate a paperback have just made my soul so happy. Yes. I love it. It makes me you know so what happy. Else I love about it too. If you're like debating ads or doing Facebook ads, like invest time in TikTok instead of Facebook ads, because I can tell you, even when I have a TikTok that only gets like, I don't know, let's say 2000 views, which in TikTok world is like, okay, like that's all right. You did all right. Like yeah. I'll give you some views. Even that will sell more books for me than a $25 Facebook ad. Like it's, it's I'm going to be like, like you can see it. I'm going to be 100% transparent. And this is the most fucked up shit that has ever happened in my whole life, right? So I do like Zodiac TikToks as a joke on my author page because it's also a part of me, okay? I have oh a gosh. TikTok on my author page that got 10 million views. And it was, a, it was a fucking Zodiac TikTok about where to put all 12 Zodiacs in a mother effing vehicle. And I was like, you're joking. I was like, this blows up. But this, this, I took but my whole heart into this one TikTok. You have no idea the sales I got from that. I was like, well, oh my God, really? Zodiac TikTok, here I come. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I love it. My if TikTok would actually serve me to book talk, that would be great. But it just sends me to dudes. I just have nothing but like guys so in my hot. comment being like, "You're a little cleat chaser. You're trying to destroy this little baseball boy's life." I'm like, "Oh my god, it's a fucking book, dude. It's a book." But I love that the people that find book talk. That that's what stop me from being not. an asshole to them in the comments because it's fun. Yes. Yeah. I love people who are not on book talk that stumble across a book talk thing and they're like, whoa, I actually thought this happened. I think this is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, It'd be fine if it was girls, but it's all guys for me. Angry yeah. men. Well, and Willow, I have to say, Willow, like two things I love about your TikTok. One, I love when you duet something while you're drinking coffee and like, oh, just, that's like live react. Very you. funny. And also I love how real you've been about like, dark romance and why we love it and why it's okay as a woman to love dark romance even though it's effed up and i'm like when i see those i'm just like please louder for the people in the back because thank you i, I feel I like like stop like get off my junk chad yeah yeah freaking chad, chad. I was, yeah mental oh. health and it just I'm like my, my I be suddenly become a raging feminist anytime I talk about romance books <laughs> because it has occurred to me how little information is in our culture to educate women about our own pleasure and yeah. about sex and how I grew up and my assumption and what I was taught and what I knew is that sex ends when the man comes. Yes. And that's what I knew about. That was all that I knew about sex was that like and wait, is there more? He's over, <laughs> so it's done. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hello. But just like, kidding. Just kidding, because everyone knows I'm dating real Jack Carter, so that is a lie. I just need to be clear. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope no one, I hope his children don't watch Nobody's this. Nobody's judging you. <laughs> Nobody's judging you. No judging. But women who don't read romance novels do not receive that education. Well, I think, I think also another thing is the evolution of the, of society, right? Okay. So I am younger than most everybody in this fucking thing, which is fine. But, um, I come, I think I, my generation of people were very, very more open about sexuality, being for sexual sure. and things of that nature. So like, for example, I tell this all the time and I hope to God, my grandma does not stumble across this, but, um, cause she is on like in the internet, but um, the remember, interwebs. A few years ago, Fifty Shades of Grey was a big deal, right? Um, now, mind you, I had been on Wattpad for like years before Fifty Shades of Grey came out. So 
I already knew what went where and how to delicately put it with words when it finishes about, right? So I found, I was like cleaning off this table for Thanksgiving and I found Fifty Shades Freed and I was like, Grandma, I was like, are you reading this? And she was like, shh, she's like, don't tell anybody. And I was like, Grandma, I was like, I don't care. You know what a flogger is? <laughs> She's like, please shut up. You're like, I want one for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that shows a really big difference, right? And she said, like, oh, but like, do you like it? And I'm like, yeah, Grandma. I was like, you're, you're okay. It's okay to like it. Like, we can read these books and be like, yo, dog, look, I read these books and these books are fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that's okay. And I think that our, like, I think younger generations, the, the farther we go, the more open we'll have with conversations like this. And I think if men would realize that if, hey, like, if maybe you picked up this book and you read it, like, I know so many women who have been like, oh, like, my husband and I buddy read these together and our sex life is just through the roof. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, Man. I have couples like friends of mine who are couples who listen to my books on audio and they're like, yeah. I don't know if this is weird, but like right after that scene, we had to like take a break. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, name the baby candy. Name the baby candy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think that if, if men, I think if men would stop seeing them as competition and as like uh, partners, I think that it would be a little better, but um, until that moment, we're just gonna, we're just gonna. Okay, now that we took like a left turn and we got onto all kinds of shit. Um, I know, right? It's because of Chad. That it's Chad. Chad. That was, Thanks, I mean, Chad. it was excellent to Chad. see the rebuttal to Chad, though. It was, it was. Dude, he came for the wrong fucking community. I tell you that really right did. now. I tell you, the mm -hmm. book community is not the one to come at. We <laughs> fear not. Like, we're crazy. Especially, especially I, spicy romance readers. I literally told Stevie, I was like, I literally love reading books about mafia men who kill people for a living. Do not, do not test me. Do <laughs> not come for me. Yeah. I will, I um, will use some of these moves. Chris, uh, Kristen in the in the chat said, women have been open about reading romance now, more open about reading romance now than back in the day when they would hide it. Which absolutely. Is so true. Like, absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, I, I read romance. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Stevie, you can take the next question. We're gonna go back to script now. Okay. Stupid chat. What are, what are some of the best parts about being an author? Ah, back up. Um. Okay. We'll do. We'll do Willow first this time. Okay. Good. Because I was like, I have. So it completely <laughs> changed my entire life. Like literally, completely changed my entire life from being a stay-at-home mom with, you know, my husband was working, drove an hour and a half away because as soon as we got our degrees, DuPont put the jobs overseas, like both of us, mine's in biology and neuroscience and my husband's is biology and chemistry and did cancer. Oh, yeah, like super nerds. We were super nerds and we were also super broke. And my perception of myself was very low. I was forever a nerd, a salutatorian. I have two degrees. I was in the PhD program. And all of a sudden I was just Sean's Dang. wife and Jax's mom. And I lost a lot of myself. So not only did it help me with finding who I am again, finding my voice, but also like I'm the I'm the sole breadwinner. I've been able to do a charity. I am start like there's so much that I'm capable of doing. And I'm trying to be like Candy said with mental health, like I'm trying to be a platform to um, ease like stigmas around mental health. My um, brother has schizophrenia. So that's yeah. a very personal near and dear to my heart mission. Um, so it's just completely changed my life. And I'm hoping, you know, that my children grow up in like a, a better environment than I did because of that. So yeah. it's night and day, like it's the, it just is, it just, it's such a blessing. I, and I, I live a blessing every, every day. Willow makes you want to go march outside of like a Capitol building with like a <laughs> Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> All right, uh, Jen, you can go. What? Um, the best part, I mean, like Willow said, it literally was life changing. I had, I had no idea that I wanted to write books for a living. This was not something that I really had considered. I did not know this was going to happen. Like I said, I just did not know I wanted this to be my life. I did not know this could be my life. Mm -hmm. um, the best part 
And it's also the most challenging and hardest part is, you know, being your own boss and being in charge of everything. And the fact that like, no one helps me and no one comes up with ideas for me and nobody can write my books for me. I mean, I guess I could if I paid them, but I don't. So, I mean, it's just like that, that kind of, um, you know, I take one day off a week, right? It's today, but, uh, I take one day <laughs> off a week and, uh, it's, the best part I think has been also, which just kind of is accredited to the internet is like being able to meet these women oh, who, yeah. who literally are like, these are my closest friends. I get it. We don't live anywhere near each other. <coughs> some of us do. Um, but it's, I know that I could reach out and talk to somebody like when Willow was mentioned, like the covers. I mean, I think I talked her ear off for 24 hours straight until I got new pictures, new covers. I had that shit done in, tw I wasn't going to disappoint Willow. I had that shit done in a day. And I <laughs> loved every you, second of it. Like, every second. The fact like that you would help me with that and take the time to genuinely like talk to me about it, see what the problem was, see if this could fix it. It's just these women are unbelievable the ones who are actually helpful and i do have to say that like willow and candy are probably two of the most like genuine and helpful women in the business i feel like a lot of people yeah. where where i come from i feel like if i fucking ask you a question like you should answer me i'm sorry but i feel like that if i fucking ask you something you should answer me like just and and also don't lie to me Tell me the truth. I'm asking you because I want to know the truth. And like, you should tell me <laughs> because I would, I would tell you, but also you should fucking tell me, but, yeah, but they don't like, yeah. they don't. And so, some people do lie. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and they exaggerate. They mm -hmm. just don't want to tell you. They don't want to help. I mean, well, it's interesting too because a lot of times in this industry you can you can be open and, and helpful to others but then when they start seeing success and exactly. you're like uh, oh great like can you give me insight to that they're like oh nope. no i don't know oh i don't know <laughs> i don't know i didn't do and it. i think that just falls under the stigma of people feeling like just like i have success and if i try to if i try to help you you're gonna steal my success like, and yeah. Not, yeah, and it's not it's the case. Well, at it's all. not the case yeah. at all. And here's the thing that we've all said: if there was one thing that worked, we would all be doing it. Exactly. And all of us would be bajillionaires because it works for every single one of us. And that is so not the case. There's no set formula. There's that's the reason we're indie publishers is because there's no set formula. There's no set trope. There's no set like marketing, like we take everybody's knowledge and try to like pull things from that. Literally when I'm trying to do shit, I'm like, okay, let me just like sit down with a notebook. I'm going to pull something from here and I'm going to pull something from here. And it's like one big potion that I have tried to like hope and hope to God it works. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, you never know. And what works for one book may not work for your next book. I mean, it's yeah. just not a thing. It's just not a thing. And it's so, constantly changing. Yes. It's and it's literally constantly like every six changing. months, something has changed that used to work and it no longer works. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that is the truth. But I do have to say, Candy, that like from the get go, you have always like, listen, I was at the top and it's a long fall to the bottom and I've been there and I'm there. Like I just live at the bottom now. It's fine. It's whatever. I just live there. But like candy has never once shunned me or been like, well, I'm too successful for you now, Jen. Like you already had your time and I'm there now. She's always included me always. If I ask her like, Hey, I'm feeling really fucking lost right now. Like I just, nothing I'm doing is working. Like what's going on. She's, she's literally like, how can I help Jen Sterling today? Like, <laughs> how can I help Jen Sterling? And I'm actually going to cry. But I, I feel like when I get back on top, it is a small fucking list of people that I will remember that were there for me when I was at the bottom. And Aww. it's the truth. So I don't say that lightly because I'm fucking bitter about it. <laughs> oh, my God. So thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> For real. And you inspire me. You always have. I mean, like I said, The Perfect Game was one of the first indie books I read. Like you are part of the reason that I had the guts to say, screw it. I don't care if a traditional publishing house wants this or not. I'm going to publish it. So, you know, it goes 
farther than than the sales or the lists or whatever. Like you have just always inspired me and inspired a, a, like many many others. Like farther than you'll ever know. I was just about to say, yeah, you are an inspiration to so many. You have no idea. Like you, like literally, I can think of like the first books that I read before I was in any publisher. And like Jen Sterling is like always there. Oh, like it's okay. always, yeah. always okay. there. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so so like like right, Candy, tell us about your favorite best part of the industry because oh, everybody's getting really emotional. I know. And I was gonna say, like, I like it makes me emotional thinking about it too. Just like this is something that I practice every day, and I, I feel like it's so important to wake up and think of gratitude first thing. So I met when I meditate every morning, I'm, I'm meditating on gratitude. And one of my favorite things is that when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I get to write today. I get to write today because there was a time in my life where I had to go to work and I had to handle all these other things. And I didn't get to write. I had to like, I remember I had writing Wednesdays. I couldn't wait for writing Wednesdays because you know, my, my ex and I, we were in a very toxic marriage and he, he did not support me writing at all. And so yeah. it, there was one day a week that I was allowed to write. And so every day I would wake up and be like, I can't wait until it's Wednesday. I can't wait until it's Wednesday. I can't wait until I was like living for Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Um, my so hat was just raised. Where does he live? I know. <laughs> I was like, I will kill him. We'll fuck him up. <laughs> He's gone. He's out of the way. We have a new guy. It's fine. Yeah, I know, but I still yeah. want to physically that, harm that him. Rock. That rock is gorgeous. That rock is gorgeous. Yeah. I saw that thing and I was like, damn. <laughs> I know. He did so great. good. He damn, did great. Rocky, rare breed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, I, think, I think that is the best part is that I wake up and I sit down and every day I'm just like, man, like this is what I get. I get to sit here and write what I love. And the bonus to that, and I think the biggest bonus, and I think I think Willow and Jed would would a hundred percent agree with this, but like we have groups of real people on Facebook and on Instagram and on TikTok and wherever who want to talk to us and want to read our books and want to share their personal like they will message me with these personal mm -hmm. things that they've never told anybody in their life because we have connected through a book. And that's why yeah. I love books so much. You can connect with a human you've never met who is across the world and say, you're not alone. Everything you're feeling, I have felt, and I wrote about it in this book. And just so you know that you're not alone. And yeah. it's, that's an incredible thing. Well, I said like, the other, go ahead, go ahead. I said the other day, I don't know how writers did it before social media. Because yeah. I feel like I'm, I fucking lose it. it had in and to like, I, the constant inspiration, the constant reinforcement of like, like having people there who give a shit, like mm -hmm. doesn't even matter how many people, like just anybody. It's like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not an imposter. Oh yeah, I'm not crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, these are love. Like, cause God forbid you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you see a negative review first, someone tags you in something else. Like if, like, well, I guess you wouldn't see the tagging, but back in the day, if you didn't have social media, I feel like like you could get down very easily. Yeah. I think like, their agents like cut out news clippings and then gave them a portfolio. Here's all the <laughs> yeah. pretty things that the news reviewer said about you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just think that books in itself are just like uh, validation. Like the whole thing in general is just like validation. Like from dark romance to contemporary romance. All of it is just validating somebody somewhere, and that's like the beauty of it. Also, I just want to say that Kristen Turnage said that Jen, The Perfect Game, is one of the books that made me want to be a writer. So I just want to end oh, right. that. Thank you. Um, all right, moving forward with the I next. I thought she was going to say it's one of the books that made me want to kill you, and I was like, I got a lot of that. Hate mail, so I understand. <laughs> oh no, no. no, thank you. That's very kind. Um. So, what do you know that you wish? What do you know now that you wish you would have known in the beginning? I'll go, first. One. Oh, go ahead. Um, I just, we kind of touched on it earlier, but mine, I just wish I understood not to get comfortable because everything changes. Everything that's working will, will someday not work. Everything that is not working may someday work. Things where you feel like your energy is not required may require your energy and things that are taking up all your energy may one day stop working. So Stacey Hart and I like to say like adapt or die. Adapt or die. And that's, yeah. that's really what it is, is you have to you can't get stuck in the, well, 
got it. Like it used to be like this, or like there was a time where I never had to do an ad ever. It was all organic. Facebook sent everybody. It was like if if yeah. one book blogger read your book and loved word it, of mouth was key. Word of mouth was key. And then there became a time when Instagram was all about. It. Then there were ads, and now it's TikTok. And I just know, like I'm riding every high as it comes in every wave, and I'm I'm enjoying the ride, knowing one day this will be archaic and there will be something else. But you have yeah. to just continue to adapt. Absolutely. Also, right. it's not Go about ahead. the launch. It is not about the launch. I used to think like when I published Damage and it was a flop, you know, I every book I felt like it's it's now or never. It's it's I this book has to matter. This launch has to be perfect. And then when you have those flops, because everybody does have a flop, sometimes you're so close to it you don't see things, or sometimes a glitch happens and you're just screwed. There's nothing you can do about it because yeah. you know the book went into dungeon or something else happened and you can't run ads or whatever happens. Um, but it's not about that. Like like up until this new release, my best book for the last three months, like my best earning, um, hadn't done shit when it launched. I just did it. It was it's a collection of four, an object cover. I did it because I wanted a pretty book. <laughs> it made me next to nothing, and now and for three months it was my best seller. Um, like I could sustain an income on just that book. And for all intents and purposes, I did it just for fun and it didn't make me shit in the beginning. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, so it's not about the launch and and you can adapt and survive. Yeah. All right, Jen, you go. Um, That's hard because I'm such like kind of the way I think and the way that I am is very much like I'm not a person who lives with regrets. I'm not a person who would want to change the past, right? I just don't think like that. So I kind of feel like there's not really necessarily something that I wish I would have known in the beginning that I know now, because that's how I had to learn and grow is to kind of go through everything. Yeah. Um, so, and I think, I mean, even though I kind of, my gut wants to say like, Oh, just be comfortable with the, the kind of writer that you are and just accept that you are not this person who does this or, or Willow who does this or candy who does this, like really be authentically you and this is who you are and own that, you have to figure that out. You have to come to that through time, trial, error, fail, success. Like, so there, there isn't really, there's nothing. <laughs> okay. Jin's just bad bitch, that's basically what I just got nothing. I got nothing for that. <laughs> you, gotta go through it all. you have to go through it all because you, yeah. you have to experience everything. But I mean, I love what Candy and Willow said. I really like what Willow said. That's so... I mean, that's, it's just so true. It was so very much like, oh my God, when I released this book, um, these, this first week is, this is it. This will be the best sales you have. And then yeah. it'll taper off and taper off and taper off and taper off and die. And it's just not really true, really. Especially no. with TikTok. The, with TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok has made that not oh, yeah. true. Backlists are killing it on TikTok. Sorry, I had like a nervous breakdown when The Wrong Game came out because I, I had the duet early in 2018, which did phenomenal. And then I released The Wrong Game and it like popped in. It was like 96 or something and then but like tanked down to the bottom. And I was like, OK, well, they don't like me for sports romance, which really sucks because I love to write about football. But I mean, I guess it is what it is. Right. And mm -hmm. then slowly it like went like this and then it just started to like level out and level out and then go up and then here and whatever. And it just stayed that way. And now the wrong game is my second bestseller. The only one that is, a, is ahead of it is weightless. And that was my first bestseller. So it's just been around longer, but yeah. the wrong game is like very soon going to pass it. So it just goes to show that like, it doesn't, really uh, it just goes to show TikTok. Really TikTok. Yeah. Even, before, even before really TikTok, before the TikTok before TikTok before oh that's TikTok, awesome it was number it was my second bestseller and Anthony who who um Willow mentioned earlier it's like he was like listen don't give up on this book like I have a good feeling that it's gonna earn for you in the backlist and it does so it's just like you have to release all of that yeah. For, for all of you who yes. don't know who Anthony is, he he's our guy. He's like our financial <laughs> advisor. We he literally has like forty authors. Yeah. So <laughs> we all talk about Anthony like this oh, because he's also super hot. <laughs> um, I'd like to say that I found him and brought him to everyone. I mean, I found him from Rebecca Donovan, but then I brought him to everyone. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I claim Anthony. Yeah. So all right, CB, you can ask the next question. Okay, so what are some of your tips for marketing yourself? Marketing yourself? Yeah. All right, Jenny, go first. 
I, I mean, I, the thing for me, I, in terms of marketing, like marketing myself versus marketing my books, I feel like, I mean, I do ads, right? Everybody seems to have really big success with Amazon ads and I do not. So I do not fucking understand them. I totally have an issue with them. I they, they just don't, I just, I, I don't. So I run Facebook ads mm -hmm. and then, um, all the social media stuff that we do. But for me, the biggest thing was just always really wanting to be genuine. Like yeah. what you see online is who I am. Yeah. I mean, I write how I talk. I post how I talk. Um, if you send me an email or a DM since the beginning, I have responded to every single person who has ever sent me or asked me anything. If I didn't respond to you, I didn't get it. Um, yeah. I just, I have never ignored anyone. I've always wanted to be helpful if I could. And I think for me, just the biggest, the biggest thing is that I've, I've wanted people to be able to, uh, relate to me like you either like me or you don't and then when yeah. you read my books if you like me as a person hopefully you find them more enjoyable but for me i've never put on a show i've never put on a persona i definitely know authors who are um their whole goal is to market themselves as one very particular brand that yeah. is not really necessarily who they are and that is not me i just am very i'm very real <laughs> and that's I important like to me the one word that comes to mind when I think of Jen Sterling is transparent. I thought you were going to say trashy. No. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, she's going to call me trashy. No, it's transparent. Is that I know, I know that right now the Jen that I am talking to on this live is the same Jen I would meet if I was a Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. And that's, True. but that's what I want to be. Like, that's what I hope people, I hope people don't feel bamboozled or that I'm a fucking liar or that I'm fake because I'm none oh, of those things. So I just, I just like to be, and I hope like all my readers feel like they're my friend because I really hope that that's the, that that's how I treat them because that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think it like, I 1 billion percent agree. And I also think it's the easiest it's the easiest to maintain. Yeah. Right. To be authentic like, and real. To, yeah, to be yourself. And if you aren't yourself, like people who do put on a persona, one day your ass is gonna slip. Like people find out. It always like the truth always comes out. Always like people comes are gonna out. find out. And then and what are you gonna do? FBI like, agents on the internet don't play games. I'm yeah. telling yeah. you, they will find out your social security <laughs> number tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're scary. Yeah. I mean, I like as an actual, like, if you want like legit, like what, how do I market or whatever? Like that, I think being genuine and being yourself is the number one thing you should remember, <clears throat> like point blank period. Um, and also just don't put pressure on yourself to create social media content or marketing content. If you do not genuinely have something to say, like there's so many people who are just like, oh, I need to have a post every day on Instagram and three videos on TikTok and I gotta be active on Facebook. Like if you have nothing to say, excuse my language, but just shut the fuck up and go live your life. Like go do something that you enjoy, go do what is making yeah. you happy. The internet's not gonna die if you disappear for two days. It really yeah. doesn't matter that, it, like it don't stress yourself it's out. It's not even gonna die if you disappear for a month. No, that's like the like, crazy thing. Like, like you can go away. for your algorithm, <laughs> like if you, especially Instagram. Yeah. If you go away for a month on Instagram, you're going to have a great post. I mean, the number one person yeah. that comes to mind, honestly, is like Whitney G. And the fact that she disappears between releases, that bitch is gone. She like a ghost in the wind. And then all of a sudden she's like, hey, I have a release. It's out right now. And that shit yeah. just shoots into the top 100. And then she's gone again until her yeah. next release. Right. But here's the thing. That's what works for her. Yeah. Like that is what works just, for her. I guess what I mean is just like I, I feel like when I do panels, I've done like a lot of specifically online organic marketing panels and web sh web shops and stuff. And it's like everybody is just like, uh, how do you manage it all? How do you manage it all, right? And the truth of it is that I love it. I love you enjoy it. Yes, Instagram yeah. posts. I love making yep. TikToks. I love. I love it. I I get excited. I dream about fucking TikToks and wake up. And I do to, like, too. I wake up and I go. I wonder how I did last night. <laughs> like it's one of the right? things <laughs> bed with coffee. Coffee and TikToks get me up. Not my kids. So, <laughs> like, but go back here's to the sleep. Thing. Yeah. 
if you have a negative association with social media, if the thought of doing this makes you break out in hives and you worry about if it's going to work or you obsess over who's liking it, who's commenting, whatever, hire someone, get someone else to yeah. do this for you because it's not your jam. And just because you're self-publishing does not mean that you have to handle marketing all on your own. Does it yeah. mean you might have to fork out some money? Yes. But yeah. is it worth your mental well-being sanity a hundred percent so if you enjoy social media be there if you don't think about what you enjoy and do that and then hire someone else to help you with the shit you don't enjoy um yeah. i know that's a like i do realize that's like a luxury right to be able to afford someone so i'm not saying like that you won't have to bite the bullet and do this in the beginning um but eventually if you get to a point where you can delegate like you have to release that control if you're self-published I know you, I know a little bit of something about you because you're like me and you love to control everything. You don't trust anyone else to do it as good as you. You're like, I need you out of my space. This is my yes. business. I will do everything. I will do my cover. I will do my marketing. I will, do I will handle it. I will yes. handle it. Yeah. But you've got to learn to delegate if it's yeah. bringing you any sort of like unnecessary stress because then that bleeds into everything. And before you know it, you're on burnout road and we all know like you don't come back from that shit. So. I yeah. am a huge control freak. Like I think anybody who's ever worked with me knows the best thing I ever did was delegate. I could not do like the, I couldn't do 70% of what I do if I didn't delegate. Like how, have, how do you, how do you delegate? Like what do you <laughs> delegate to people? I delegate almost every, I just hired another person for content creation. My assistant has an assistant. I, <laughs> I have two PR teams. Like I delegate everything that I can that isn't writing and TikToks right now. I am delegating. My husband yeah. does work. Anything that comes in where I'm like, this seems like a government thing. I send it to my husband. I'm like, he'll take care of that shit. Anything that comes in with like, um, like PR, like when I get invited to do things, I send it on over to Nina and Sophie. Have you ever heard of this? Like, what, should I do this or not? Like, like I wake up and Sophie is like, you promised you were going to do this giveaway. There's this party and your post today that you should be support, like you should be pushing are these. I'm like, thanks, Sophie. Like, like yeah. I, <laughs> like, <how laughs> say? Yeah, I, guess, I could not juggle everything on my own. It's impossible. And I did give up control very slowly, though. Very, very yeah. slowly. Um, and there were errors made. Like it's a steep learning curve. And when you give somebody something like they're going to mess up and it's a matter of do you let them keep going? Do they have that passion? Are they they going to figure it out or do you take it back? Um, which at times, I mean, I have had to, I have had to let people go, but yeah. I don't like it when it happens. So yeah. I think it's all like super amazing advice. Um, and I am going to ask one more question and then we're going to move to the chat and open that up for like questions. And I know that a few people have already asked. Oh, yay. Yay. But, um, I'm my, afraid to go into the chat because I'll leave the thing. We'll read it to you. We'll read it to you. Um, and this is like a personal question that I myself struggle with. I think it's one of the biggest things that I struggle with as an uh, author. Is yes, you should you, have sex with your husband. I mean, I do that regularly. <laughs> no. So what, um, how do you balance? I'm trying to think of how to form this question. How do you balance your creativity and marketing? Like, cause there will be, there's a lot of people. Okay. So I'm the type of person who like, I think art should come first if you're going to do art as a living. Right. And I mean, obviously I know there are ways like you have to market things that are on trend that I get that. But at the same time, it's like, if I, if I, if sports romance is hot right now, but I don't want to fucking write sports romance. You're talking, you're sports talking stuff. about how do you, how do you figure out if you're an artist or a business person? Like how do you balance those two? Yeah. Like being an artist and a, and a business. Yeah, like person. how do you balance your creativity versus like, how do you what's, sacrifice what's trending. for what's trending? I have I a do fun that. answer that involves BDSM because that's the way I think about it. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, my artist is my submissive like that that part of me that's very submissive submissives are selfish a submissive's role is to make sure that she is satisfied like she only does things that the dominant says because she knows that the dominant is going to take care of her mm -hmm. so i write what i want to write and i do that and then the dominant you take that hat off and you put your business hat on and it doesn't fucking matter if the submissive doesn't like it it doesn't matter if your artist doesn't like that the book i wrote she asked for it I put a cover on, I had the blurb that 
for me, it spoke to my soul. It's a book about like, it's a very book that's like near and dear to my heart and very close yeah. to me. And it bombed because I pushed back and I was like, no, like this, it needs to be this way. It needs to be this way. And you can't do that. If you want people to read it, if you want to be an artist that's making a living, yeah. your artist needs to shut the fuck up and let somebody who has a business hat on take control of marketing. Yeah. So it's not necessarily anything to do with trends. I don't I don't write to trends and I don't keep up with trends anymore, even though I used to. Um, but I, I don't even pay attention anymore to trends. But it's more about knowing like, so what if you really love the tattoo and you think that the tattoo that's orange and green that goes across his chest is so important to the story. If it's going to take away from the cover and they're going to skim past it because it's too distracting and they don't see the title and they don't see something that would trigger what trope it is, then get it the fuck off. Get it the fuck off because you're just going to hurt yourself and your yeah. submissive is going to be really upset because she's not getting what she needs. She's not getting the people who are loving her book and then the dominant fails. So that's my, the, my, my artist side goes completely away and my business side comes out when it's time for that. So reasons I've, I've why Willow thing. Winters is more successful than I. I have no, I have, like I think no Candy and I are the same. I feel like whatever Candy's about to say that I'm going to be like, that's exactly how I am. <laughs> I, no, I like I am envious of it. It's business has always been a struggle for me. I didn't go to school for business. I don't I everything I've had to sort of stumble, make mistakes, learn from them and then figure out how to go from there. And I feel like I'm in a very good place with my business right now. Um, I but even still, like there's sometimes when like there's something that I should be doing that just feels impossible for me to put energy toward because my energy first and foremost goes to writing because that's what brings me joy and what what I love to do. Yeah. So I will write like perfect example. This month, I'm so excited. The last book of my Palm South University series comes out, and this series is my passion project. It is my like, I love to write it. I love these characters. I'm obsessed with this world I have built. I have never written more books for characters than these ever. I've been writing for them since 2013. They make absolute zero money. I've tried changing covers. I've tried redoing blurbs. Nobody wants to fucking read them. But you know what? I could not stop writing them. Anthony told me not yeah. to write them. Stacy told me not to write them. Everyone was like, stop fucking writing these books. No one is reading them. And I was like, fuck you. I'm writing them because I, I read you. you. I read them. I read them. Thank you. <laughs> and if you don't finish it, I'm going to be pissed. I'm just saying. Oh, I'm finishing it, girl. It's coming out. But like, I guess, I guess for me, what ends up happening is is that I I do business in in the way that feels um, acceptable to me and to, and that I love to do so that's I think why I've become sort of like the the social media girl or whatever like like especially maybe not so much now I mean honestly I'm getting old and like there are young hungry girls and and men who are they're they're doing they're doing social media better because they're in it right they've they've grown up in yeah. it um. But I love social media, which is why I think I sort of became known for that aspect of marketing because it's where I enjoy being. Um, but I'm the same as Jen in the sense that like Amazon ads have never worked for me um, ever and I can't get them to work for me. I still work on them every day. I'm in there trying to fuck with shit, but I just don't. <laughs> I'm like over it. them. I am yeah. too. They denied just... my cushy cover. Apparently oh. you can't put an ass on the cover and expect Amazon to let you, <laughs> let you advertise it. <laughs> I, I have really good luck with Facebook ads. So I, I still continue to do Facebook ads because they work um, pretty well for me. So that's that's basically the only advertising I do. Yeah. Well, I think to, to answer your question, MJ, the, the balance between them, for me, writing comes first and foremost always. So when I get up in the morning, I have a morning routine that I go through and then I sit down and the first thing I do is write and I don't stop. I don't get out of my writing zone until I have hit whatever that day's goal is, which could be a scene or a word count just depends. And yeah. then with whatever energy is still left, I put that energy into marketing and my business and whatever. So I so days I finish writing and I'm like, Wee, let me go do everything. And other days I finish writing and I shut down my computer and I leave and I'm like, I'm done. 
I am envious though that you you actually do that because that was one of my goals. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm before I do anything, I'm writing just a chapter a day, and I can bust out a chapter in like 30 minutes. And I wake up thinking about my book. Like I love, I love it. There's some days it's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm like, I have not even opened up the word doc. And I told myself <laughs> I was gonna write today. And like I I wish I could just wake up and every day write, just just even if it was just a scene. Because you know, yeah. if you're gonna start the scene. Like something's gonna come That's later. Gonna come. No. Yeah. Willow, I'm gonna start texting you and be like, shut everything down, get in your mm -hmm. manuscript right yeah. now. Yeah. Drop it I have no excuse. I have written with the baby on the boob. Suck it oh, on it. Like, seen it. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen it. <laughs> I I personally, so I have I'm bipolar, so and I have anxiety. So sometimes like I have to have a routine or I will I will do nothing. Like you gotta understand that when I say I have to have a routine, like if I start a book and the breakfast I had was a sausage, egg, and cheese bagel, then I have to have a sausage, egg, and cheese bagel every single morning before the book is done. <laughs> or I'm not going to get it done because my brain like tells itself, right? Like it's like I eat that food and my brain's like, it's okay. Conditioning. It's a habit. Yeah. You working. put yourself into like, yeah. Yeah. But if, it works, like, if it works for you, who cares? Yeah. You better really like sausage, egg and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not even like it's not even like it's a hunger thing. It's like a it's, it's a like, habit. It's a yeah. habit. But yeah. the, when the book is done though, and I start something new, like I have to have herbal tea at 3 p.m. And people think it's like an OCD thing, but it's, I'm not OCD. It's just that I have really, really, really bad anxiety, so bad that if I'm not like doing like this certain thing that I started when I started writing it. It's atrocious. Nothing's gonna work. It's trash. Yeah. I can't write. I need to go like die. Like I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. I Here's had a weird thing. Chance. Go ahead, Willow. With when I was writing Kiss Me and Hold Me with Amelia, the heroine is like super wealthy and she had silk pajamas. So I bought these silk pajamas and I was wearing them like every single day. I do not even like these pajamas. After I was done writing the books, I went to go put one on and I was like, this is kind of not flattering. I was like, why? Like, why was I wearing these? Like, <laughs> I don't like these They're somewhat similar. Yeah. 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 So I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and open up the chat for like questions. So if you guys have questions for them, like feel free to like drop any of the ones you want. I am gonna go back and uh, am I gonna I, I'm gonna butcher her fucking name. Is it Alana? Alina. Alina. Okay. See, look what I Alina. Need. See, Alina. See, look what I need. See, Alina. Alina said, what recommendation do you have for starting to network when you're afraid is coming off as smarmy? Oh, when yeah. what? I don't know what like, that word means. Like Small you're trying words. to get information from them or something. Oh, like oh, oh. Of, yeah. right, okay. and, it's, and honestly, that's a valid question. It is a delicate line to, to walk because you can turn me off very quickly. If we've never had a conversation before. And yeah, don't ask us for favors. to me ever oh, is, yeah. hey, I just released a book. Can I share it in Candyland? I, like, I am so about sharing my shit. I send yeah. you my newsletter. I will send you in Candyland, wherever. But if that's the first interaction with me, it's like an instant. I'm like, you just want to, like, have access to what I've taken years to build so that exactly. you don't have to do the work that I had to do. That's what it comes off as. You know? Yeah. And you don't, want, you don't want to make people feel used. Like, you're yeah. using them. You've never talked to them. We have zero relationship. Don't ask me for a favor. Like, yeah, don't yeah. ask me to do something for you. Like, and don't expect that we have time to read your books. It sounds shitty, but you'll understand once you start writing more books and you're busy that when everyone's asking you to read their books, you're gonna be like, fuck, I don't, I can't, I'm trying to write my own books. Like I don't have a lot of time to read all these other books. And it's not, it's not us being mean or cruel. Um, I think, I think a better email, if you want to, um, email established authors asking for help is to genuinely be like, Hey, how would I go about doing this? Do you have any suggestions for, you know, what, what did you do? What do you think I could do? Cause I, I think that's, you know, if you're asking, if you're asking a question for how you could learn or how you could grow or how, whatever, I think the majority of us are willing to, of course, answer or help with yeah. that. Or asking or for just say hi. Huh? Just, yeah, because she said just for networking, if you just want to network, just say hi. Hey, yes. 
that's yeah. the thing. You don't yeah. know me, but I know you. And and I just wanted to say hi because one day I'd like to be in your circles. Or I'd, I'd like I'd to like be to be you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but one I one person so really turned me off. She was like brand new author. Like I had the baby. She messaged me and she's like, I'm brand new. Can you tell me all about AMG ads and how to get them and do them and who your contact is? And I was like, um, hi. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not how this works. Okay. That's abrasive. I mean, yeah. honestly, so like when I first started, I genuinely sent the same. I sent out a mass email. Like I, I wrote it because I was nervous, right? Because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to fuck this up. But I basically wrote like one email in my notes and I was like, hello. My, you know, and I was like, you know, like this is my name. And I was like, if you have any tips, tricks or recommendations, please send them my way. And I felt like that left it open enough for them to either... A, if they wanted to answer, they could. And B, if they wanted to talk about whatever it was they wanted to talk. Like, I was willing to take whatever information I could get. And I think that when you're a new author, I think that's a mentality that you have to have. Like, you can't expect these other, these, like, bigger authors to be like, let me take out this whole hour of my day to sit down and talk to these 20 authors that are in my DMs asking for favors, right? You just the, have the, to genuinely the thing be like, is like there, there's so much information online. There's so much information about self-publishing yeah. that you can Google and search. And like, that's what I yeah. did back in 2011. That's what I did. That's why yeah. I was a failure. Self-publishing was a failure. But like that, I mean, I searched, I Googled, I did whatever. It, it didn't, I don't even think it occurred to me to be like, oh, let me go ask Amanda Hawking, who was the biggest self-published author at the time, mm -hmm. um, if she would like to read my little shitty book. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I don't think I mean, I've ever asked a bigger author to read my book. Honestly, okay, this is actually super funny. So I'm friends with Saffron Kent, who is a lot bigger of an author than me, right? And we're friends. Like, I've never asked her for a favor or anything. And when I was talking, we were talking about, like, both of our work in progresses. And I and I bait her. And I, she was like, oh, would you want to bait of this? And I was like, oh, I would love to. You know, like, I don't care. And she's like, are you going to send me an art copy of your book? And I was like, no, I didn't know that you. I didn't know you wanted one. I was like, I don't. That's really, like, that's so really kind. Like that's awesome. Like, She's so awesome. Like, I'm gonna throw up in my mouth a little bit. I didn't want to <laughs> ask because I was like, because I feel like if I'm like, hey, do you want to copy my book? I feel like that's me saying, hey, read this, and we're not friends no more. So hold on, hold on. <laughs> so one of the things that got me to ask, because I don't ever ask anybody for anything really, like ever, unless it's something I can give back. But yeah. one of the quotes that I heard that made me feel so much better is one of the best gifts you can give somebody is to make them feel included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just saying like, I have ARCs, like so, like I have ARCs going out, if you want one, one's yours. Um, like that is easy peasy and nice and it's inclusive. So I, I try to include people instead of ask for things. It's more like, yeah. like I'm, I just want you to feel included. I want you to know that you matter, your opinion to me matters. If you got time, that's great. And if you don't, that's yeah. okay too. I yeah. feel like that's Candy's life motto. Yeah. Like that is like when you say that sentence, I'm like, I just think of candy. Yeah. Like Aww, candy includes everyone. Yeah. yeah. I, well, here's the thing. I, I feel like the three of us would agree on this. Like I've always just felt like deep within my soul that women are more powerful when we link up and we join together and we lift yeah. each other up and reach a hand down and say, come up here with me. Okay. Now we're going to climb to that next thing together. Yeah. And I, I like, I may look, I may have like, I'm not immune to looking at what somebody else is doing and feeling jealous or feeling like, at, like admirable, like, man, I wish I had that. Of course that happens yeah. to everybody. But I also don't have that competitiveness in me to where I'm like, I want to beat you so bad that I'm going to keep everything to myself. Or oh, whatever. God. Yeah. yeah. No, especially, in, especially in books, because if y'all haven't noticed, our readers, they are like, magical unicorns they read like a book a day if not more no, yeah so, like three of them <laughs> yeah so they can read my books and jen's and willows and like it doesn't hurt yeah. any of us yeah exactly so um but i think i think a roundabout answer to this is if you want to network go to book signings and go just be friends Go buy a drink at the bar, say hello, talk about anything but work because God, sometimes we're just like, can we talk about something else? Like the I bar is where it's at. The bar like the I bar even if I don't make at. it to signings. I'm if I can just make it to the hotel bar, okay. I'm gonna do my best to be there because that is where it's at. You don't even have to drink. Get a tonic. But genuinely, 
I just want to be friends with these people. Like at the <laughs> end of the day, like I could give a shit less. And I think that's how me and Saffron became friends is because like I could give a shit less if she gives me any advice or lets me pop into any of her groups. And the same goes for any of you three. Like I could give a shit less if you ever let me do anything in any of your projects ever again. I just want to be friends with you. Like well, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, cool. and here's here's the bubble breaker. And Jen talked a little bit about this earlier, but like you could be friends and like make a great yeah. connection with like Colleen Hoover or Taryn Fisher or who, whoever you think, Megan Quinn, whoever you look at and think they're just killing the game. You could be their best friend, but guess what? That doesn't mean that everyone's going to go read your book. They no. send you in a newsletter. They share you in a group, whatever. They it, That is is not what's going to yeah, make not a guarantee you. for anything. And that doesn't need to be the mentality you have going into making friendships in this in this community. And I think that's where a lot of people mess up is making like fake connections like that. It's just like go into it being a genuine person. Like if you want to be friends with them, and be join with them. join like because, join writing groups on Facebook so that you can yeah. meet people who are in the same place as you are, who are writing. Who, if you're in the process of writing your first book, find other people who are in the process of writing their first yeah, book yeah. in That's the same genre. Right. So then you guys can link up and like promote each other. And this is how you form these yeah. genuine friendships when you guys are in the same place at the same time, trying to accomplish the same kind of things together. That's what we all did. I that's mean, that's what definitely me, what I did. That's what me and Stevie and then two of the ladies that are in the comments, Kristen and JC have, we have this author MC because- And I'm not the author. author. And I'm not the author. But I mean, you're still in it. <laughs> I mean, but like, <laughs> we have this author MC- We include we Stevie have, in like, all things. Yeah. Okay where we have like road names for each other, but we're all at the same level. Like, I guess like socially people see us that we're all successfully at the same level. And it's just, it's cool because we all yes. feel like, like when I want to text somebody about how shitty I feel about how my book did, I'm not going to message Willow Winters. <laughs> <laughs> Willow yeah. Winters is probably like, it just, I have been I mean, there. It's, it sounds I'm really there. shitty, but like so, yeah. me and Jillian Dodd were like at the same time, right? We were really good friends. And then yeah. like a few years later, like Candy and Megan Quinn came on the scene. So then Jillian and I, Jillian and I are like, oh, well, we're the seniors and this is our new sophomore class and we love them. <laughs> Like yeah. it, it just it just because of timing of like when you entered the yeah. industry, right? Okay. Don't yeah. think of it like that anymore. Yeah. It's the way. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But I okay, did. Okay. So another question from the comments is from Jenna Foy, and she says, "How do you manage a writing schedule with young Velcro kids? For those who have them, literally just wrote a book on my phone during nap times. That's the way Aww. I did it. That's incredible. When I." had Evie she would sleep on my chest and Jax would be in a nap and I would write with her on my chest like you just do it when you can do it and just open up that that laptop like right now it's more difficult for me because it's like an interruption I swear to god every 45 minutes it's an interruption like somebody needs something because I have yeah. Jax who's seven I have Evie who's five and I have you know Cody who's eight months what month is it? Yeah, he's eight months. <laughs> I'm like, he's still a boob baby. He is yeah. still a boob baby. And but then I have my husband also. And then you have email. Another boob and, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the other booby. Uh, sorry. <laughs> They're different sizes right now because the baby only eats off of one. So you probably needed to know that before you got oh, that hurts. That hurts my boobs for you. <laughs> That'll be normal one day. Um, but it's literally like whenever I can get it, I get it. Mm -hmm. And I like, sometimes I do need the fire under my ass. And I tell my husband, like, I, I have to go hide. Um, please like lock the kids downstairs, <laughs> like do something. Where well, they can like, be in the pantry writing. Like she's yeah. got like, you know, like everybody leave me alone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. My mommy time and use writing as your mommy time. Like yeah. make sure that you love what you're writing because it comes so much easier if you could just fall into it. Exactly. So, I mean, well, I mean, do you guys have any other Jen candy? I know you, I don't know. Do, I mean, do you guys have, do you have children? I don't think you have children. Candy, I don't know if you have children. Do you have children? I, do you I have a son? As well. I was like, I was like, do you guys have any other input you want to put in? But I was like, I feel like it was more like sectioned towards like people who have children or like young children, like Velcro children. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, my yeah. son's 23, dude. So, <laughs> but, but the thing is like, 
he still takes up a lot of my time, right? Like he's a baseball player. So I still go travel like life. I I understand relating to like having kids who are like, who are that needy and still, Mm -hmm. I feel like when my time was more crammed, I performed better. Now that I have this uh, relentless open amount of time, oh, Mm -hmm. I can get to writing anytime. I mean, I don't have anything else to do. There's no kids here. Like I, I definitely work better under a constricted schedule. So I think like maybe I get it that you're writing on your phone, which A is amazing. Like that's incredible. And that shows you that you really love and want to be doing this. The fact that you're doing that, but yeah. kind of, you know, flip your mindset to instead of being like, God, this is really hard or this sucks to be like, Hey, this is pushing me to write because if yeah. I don't do it now, I'll never do it. And, yeah. and I really did think like once Blake moved out that I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to have all this a whole entire day with nothing except for I could write all day long. And then I was like, I don't want to write all day long. <laughs> like it just was such a weird and I, and I still don't like, it's just, in, it's interesting. I, I am definitely a better performer. If someone was telling me I didn't have 10 hours in the day to write, they're like, Hey Jen, you only have two hours. Then I'd be like, Oh shit. I only have two hours to write. Oh, I better get this shit done. Yeah. Who, who is the, I cannot believe I can't remember his name right now. I'm having like a baby, a baby brain fart. Spider-Man, Marvel. Tom Holland. The comic writer. Tom Holland. Oh, oh. Oh, oh my God, why did you ask me that? Stan. Stan, Stan Lee. Lee. Yeah. He would write the comics the night before. Literally brilliant man. Excellent. He, what yeah. he has done and his imprint has been excellent. He very much had imposter syndrome as well. And he would write the night before and get it all done the night before. Just imagine. Wow. Yeah. Just imagine. And mm-hmm. okay, so and, and another thing that I think just shows how differently artists' minds work. And I think that that in itself is one beautiful machine. So Stephen King is like my all-time favorite author in the whole world. I'm in love with him. Like I would literally probably faint if I ever met him. Saw him, breathes his air. It doesn't matter. Um, so he literally, so I'm pretty sure like everybody's heard that he made, like wrote the book about like the writing life or whatever. Like it was a probably, it was like a big on deal. Writing. Like, on, on writing. writing. Yeah. So he did this interview, right? Where this girl asked a question. She was like in college. He was doing like a, an interview at a college or something. This girl was like, um, like, do you take plot notes? Like, how do you organize your notes? And he's like, if I need to write it down, then obviously it didn't need to be in the book anyways. And I was like, shut up, shut up. I was like, shut up, you man. I was like, there's no way that that is actually he does that. And he was talking about how, like, if he feels like he needs to write it down in, like, a notepad, like, he doesn't feel like it needs to go in the book. He was like, if I'm writing, it just comes to me. And I'm like, I'm going to punch you in the face. Like, I love you. But I'm going to also punch you in the face. Because I have notes upon notes upon notes of, like, staying. And then, like, I'll look at them. And I'm like, what the hell was I even trying to say? So how do you guys organize like notes? Like do you guys take notes, like plot notes, like plot points? And how do you organize those and not let them get like too far out of the way? At 3 a.m. once I wrote a note on top of a note that I had written like an hour before. And then I didn't know what either note was. And it it was horrendous. It was awful. I literally ruined two brilliant. Like I will, if I wake up and I need to go to bed and I need to go to bed and I, because I have to go to bed. Like I am, I am exhausted right now and it's only 8.30 and that's offensive because that is just offensive. Um, so I, am I will offended. only write down, it's usually dialogue and the dialogue yeah. reminds me, but I'll also have an entire book idea and I have an Excel sheet with just one line and that one line will trigger what that entire book is. Yeah. So I'll just write down usually the dialogue and I just, I write it down in a note, whatever it is that's going to trigger it. So that first thing in the morning I can write it. That's the plan usually. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes sometimes I screw myself over and I don't remember what it was and then I get sad. Um, but sometimes it comes back. You know, like, yeah, do what you can. All right, Candy, yeah. what are you? Mine are all phone notes for the most part. So I will reach for my phone um, when I'm going to sleep or like to be quite transparent, most of my book ideas come when I'm high. And so they don't make sense when they originally come to me. So I just, girl. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, we're best friends. I'm such a pothead. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I'm oh, so in so, shock right now. <laughs> so I will. So I just write oh down God, whatever it is, and then the next day I decide whether or not it was actually a good idea. 
Um, I'm sorry, my dad just walked in the room. Continue talking. Oh, thanks uh, for changing dad. the batteries in the freaking smoke detector, dad. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's been beeping the whole time. wants to be a cover model. It's been beeping the whole time. Hey, I don't, I don't let's show, show us those arms. What's happening? <laughs> no, don't, don't. Please, God. I can't with you. Jen, Fix don't. the I, smoke I, detector. That's Pops. pretty good for PTA. Dad, please don't. Are you sure that's your dad? Yeah. He's my dad. Yeah. I'm almost 52. Please don't. I don't make some TikToks <laughs> together. I'm gonna i I'm gonna be a big fan of these TikToks with yeah. Daddy. Oh my god. Yes. I love you, go. Willow, everything's <laughs> fine. No, I just feel I'm blushing is all. <laughs> I'm <laughs> almost done with this live. I can't hear their laugh. This part needs to go on somebody's TikTok. Can we just we're gonna just take this section right here? Okay, <laughs> it's going on TikTok. Yeah. All right, y'all have a good evening. Sorry, all I didn't. Right. What, which one's beeping? I don't hear one beeping. <laughs> it's been beeping for two hours, yeah. Sam. Yeah. What's your name, Dad? Don't fix it right now, Dad. I'm it's fine. <laughs> fix oh, it. No. Take your shirt okay. off and fix it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's literally beside me trying to fix. I'm Look. trying to talk about pot with Candy Steiner. Look, and this how is hard that funny. was. Fix. No. Oh, okay. you, why did you do that one hour, 34 minutes, and 49 seconds ago? <laughs> you allow me to come in here. That's a lot. That's why I've been trying to get you to fix that damn fire thing for like freaking months. It's I still be <laughs> Okay, go. All right, I gotta go. All right, bye. All right, bye. bye. Y'all are good. I'll talk to you later. Bye, bye Daddy. Daddy. It was good oh, to see you. God. Did you just say I, bye, yes, Daddy? Yes, back. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I knew that if Jen that and my dad good. got on the same camera, it was going to be awful. I knew it. I'm sweating. Please, Dad. I'm trying to have a good question. Thank you, Dad. I appreciate that. Oh, my God. Me too, Daddy. <laughs> oh okay, give me it like two minutes. Oh my god, I'm trying to talk pot with Candy Steiner. That made me a little sweaty. <laughs> that made me a little Jen sweaty. Sterling. I'm sweating profusely. I feel like I'm going through menopause or something. To just be my dad. Anybody needed to, you know, meet him? That's him. Oh. Well, I needed to meet him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, this has been my whole life, like my entire the entirety of my life. This Are is you so literally- excited? I'm about to be your stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, Candy, I didn't know that you smoked pot. That's amazing. Have you ever oh. tried? Have you ever tried an edible? You know, like edibles. Do you eat edibles? I make my own. What is happening? Oh my God, to me conversation. too. Wait, I just need you to say this one thing. If you smoke out of a bong, if you put, if you boil lavender, and then you put lavender like the water that you boil after you strain it into your bong water, it'll help. You'll have a more like refreshing sleep. That was all I needed to say. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. it, but no, I was just, all I was trying to say was that I write down notes when I'm sleepy or high or like whatever distracted. And then I go back through them, but I organize my notes by usually by like, if I have the book title, so every time I have an idea for that book, I'll write the title and then write whatever I, whatever I was going to, or if I don't know what the title is, it's like some differentiator. So like, for instance, the wrong game before I knew what it was going to be, I was like, girl with fi- girl with football tickets. And I would like, whatever. So then when I, when it came time to finally write that book, I would search in my notes, girl with football tickets. And I had like 15 notes. So the first thing that I do when I go into my plotting stage is I move all my notes over from my phone. And then I'm like, this is trash. This is good. This is trash. This is good. And then I figure out like, that's kind of like the backbone of my yeah. story is that those those like initial notes. I love so that. You're, you're a plotter. I am a plotter, but I but I, I I guess I would say I'm a skeleton plotter. So I plot like a few major points or a few. You're a planter. I'm a, I'm a planter for you're sure. A planter. All right, yeah. Jen, what about you? Do you take notes? Also, I just want to say that ladies in the comments, I literally <laughs> cannot deal with you. JC. <laughs> JC is like, no wonder your smoke detector was going off. And I was like, <laughs> and then like another lady was like, I thought it was my smoke detector. I made my husband take it outside. I <laughs> literally want to die right now. I am oh, terrified. that is so funny. I, anyway, I'm okay. a pantser. I cannot plot for the life of me. I, I definitely have a notebook where I write like very basic notes down. Um, 
But other than that, I just can't. I can't. I have such a hard... I really want to be better at writing. I really want to be better at plotting because I feel like it would make my life so much easier. But I just can't do it. That's one of the things that I was talking about, which like accepting what kind of writer you are. Yeah. And um, and I'm okay with not... I, I tried to plot and had really great plot notes and then the book did nothing like the plot so i just my brain doesn't work like that i definitely it comes to me as i'm writing um and things i never expected to happen happen because i didn't plan for them because i don't fucking plot love it i mean i think that's okay all right so do we have if we have oh do you think that's okay stepdaughter do you (laughs) do you think that's okay do you want to be grounded? I'm going to tell you right now that there is no way in in hell, there's no way you'd be able to put up my dad. There's literally no way in hell. Leave Jack Carter. Real Jack Carter would, then you have I a mean, dead daddy. I mean, probably, <laughs> but like, there's just like, okay, I just. But Alina just said, I'm rewatching this because that 60 seconds of daddy smoke detector was the best moment of my day. And now I'm like, okay, time to write a short story called daddy Don't. smoke detector. Oh my God, <laughs> please do it. He wants to be a cover model. Oh my God. No, 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 Lisa Suzanne. He came like I was visiting and I was doing like a podcast with Stevie and Lisa Suzanne. And my dad comes in here and is like, Hey, your brother is like, you know, like trying to have a conversation with me while I'm, you know, talking to people, obviously. And he like comes in and she's like, Oh my God, I put him on a cover. And I'm like, don't, why would you tell him that? Like now all he's going to talk about. And let me tell you something that is all that man has talked about cover model. He can be a cover model. He's not enough to do it. Don't his head is already too big. It doesn't fit through most doors. He doesn't need to do that anymore. Anyways. Okay, y'all. I just wanted to say I have like a five minute warning because I do a fantasy football league for Candyland every year and our yeah. draft is is very soon. So I am I'm about to, to wrap it up. But <laughs> everything weird. Was like with the daddy, the smoke detector thing was a little was distracting. Anyway, so it, that, that that's is, the first time in the whole video that I got very sweaty. <laughs> oh, you're welcome you're welcome for my dad there you go um and i'm trying to watch the u.s open also so anywho this is been so this has been so amazing you guys have been like really great and we want to just thank you guys from the bookshelf boyfriend podcast and all the people who listen to that we appreciate you guys for coming on and talking and answering these questions for us um thanks for having us yeah. i love this I'm so we, we've had this plan for like 10 months <laughs> Stevie's a gangster when it comes to this plot planning stuff. She just like lets me know a week in advance so I don't fuck it up. Like she's so good. She's so amazing. I planned out for this is one day of fourteen. Yeah, the romance. And she is an OG. She's a gangster. We have thirteen brand new episodes dropping all the way up until our one year anniversary, which is September eighteenth. Yeah, and we have seventy. Thank you so much. But, uh, authors and a hundred books going out. Woo! That makes wow. me sweat. Anyway. Um, I wanted to say I wasn't in the chat at all. Obviously, every time I tried to go in, it would close out. So that if there were questions that anybody had, like specifically for me, that didn't get answered, please feel free to DM me on like any social media site, and I will respond to you. And like I said before, if I don't, it's because I didn't see it. But I'm happy to answer any questions if they actually had que- questions. Or if not, or if you were like, I fucking hate you, Jen, I'd be like, that's cool. <laughs> that's nice. But, um, I guess I'm just going to give you guys like a few minutes that you guys can talk about. If you have anything like specific upcoming, you guys can tell like people about it. And then we're going to tell you and then we're going to end it and leave. So Candy can do her football and I can watch tennis. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that was my ending. All right. <laughs> All right. Willow, Candy, when do you go? Oh, me? Okay. Um, I, I Honestly, right now I'm really obsessed with the Dorian app. So like, just come play on the Dorian app with me. It's super fun. It's like The Sims, except I get to write the story of what The Sims are doing and you get to read it. And it's super fun. And if you're a writer, you can come on and join me and write. And it's, it's just a blast. So um, it's a really cool way to get an idea of what readers like from you. Um, and also just to like play around and have fun, which I think we can all use. Like it's stress-free, it's pressure-free, it's just writing for fun. Um, and it's, it's a good time. And also if you want to support my passion project that nobody reads, then pick up the Palm South University. It's really great. It's really amazing. I love it. I need to do that. I've never heard of that app before. The Dorian app? 
Yes, Willow, you would love it. You would it love sounds it. so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Let me tab really quickly. Is it Dorian like Dorian? Like Dorian? Dot, if you go to D O R I A N Dorian. Dorian I tried to read the chat. I'll send you an invite. Live. You it's right here. That's okay, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I might poke you about that. So that whoa, where'd you go? There you are. I went to the wrong tab. I was like, this is not where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Why does nobody um, else get kicked off when they try and leave a tab? Because I, I think everybody besides you is on a phone. I'm on, no, a, phone. Phone. I'm on a computer. Yeah. I'm on a computer. I'm on my oh. phone. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Candy's just gangster. Candy's just not touching it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Willow, do you have anything new or upcoming you want to talk about real quick before we say goodbye? Uh, if you don't want to think and you just want smut, I just released an office romance with like praise kink and a little bit of degradation. The conflict is like very, very minimum, but it's still enough to like, uh, so if, if, you, if you want some sexy times, there's a it's tissue. Enough to, like, uh, you can judge this. MJ's book. dad. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. I am now thoroughly embarrassed in front of three people that I admire. Very much. I, will, I will ground you. I will ground you. My next TikTok isn't going to be about my book. It's going to be like when NJ's dad comes in and change the smoke detector. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'm going to make. And then I'm going to. And then I'm going to do what you. <laughs> do that to me. Oh, God. All right, so ladies, thank you so much for joining us. This was great. And thanks uh, for having us. Uh, we hope that you guys have a great night. And uh, that is all. So goodbye. Bye. 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 Have a good night. I